Hello to our audience tuning in, and welcome to our first ever segment of Knox Talks. I'm Susanna Matthews, Director of Engagement here at Knox, and we thought it would naturally make sense to have our founder, Mike Mathia, be our inaugural guest to speak about both the concept of our Knox Talk series and the Higher Local Challenge initiative. Thanks for making time to be here, Mike, and welcome. Thank you, Susanna. I'm glad to be here, honored to be the first ever guest on Knox Talks. Well, as you well know through our discussions, our plan is to begin with the Wichita stories of our Knox Talks guests. So can you begin with telling us a little bit about your Wichita story? Sure, and the idea, of course, for Wichita stories, Susanna, is that uh, in every community there are individuals with stories to tell. And when I think about what's happening here in Wichita with a lot of leaders driving change and innovation, and we're going to be interviewing many of them, which is, is exciting for us to, to have them as guests, we want to hear their Wichita stories too. What's their background, their journey? Uh, you know, mine is really pretty straightforward. I wasn't born here, but was raised here. Dad moved us here when I was five years old from Kansas City. And he really did that to keep us a little closer to the projects he was working on as an expediter in the southern region of the country. And so he got us a little closer, so we got to see him a little more often when we moved to Wichita, which was a nice benefit uh, from that relocation. But raised here, educated here, and professionally spent my entire career here. Most of that was uh, 20 years as the Director of Human Resources for Donlinger Construction here in Wichita. Our leading contractor, you can't look at Wichita's skyline and not see everything that firm has accomplished over all of the years. So it was a real honor to be their Director of HR. Uh, the Donlinger family made an investment as, in me as a young man, guided me. They were wonderful mentors and continue to be. And I decided to take the entrepreneurial plunge in 2013 and step out of the comfort of that corporate world into the entrepreneurial world. But it's been an amazing experience for me. Uh, we first launched a company called Insights Career Consulting, which works with candidate clients on all matters of career and employer clients on matters of HR. And it was working with these two groups that really brought rise to the need for Knox because I'd always understood the employer frustrations as a, as a recruiter never quite appreciated the candidate frustrations until our Insights clients started sharing those with me. It was at that point to where the idea for Knox was conceived through some of those frustrations on how to best address those pain points. Well, for those who maybe aren't familiar with Knox, what is it and how is it different? Knox is dramatically different from other sites out there uh, today. Uh, Knox is really taking an approach that for a hundred years, Susanna, has focused on the resume. It's been the centerpiece of everything. And not that the resume isn't important, but no matter how well-crafted a resume is, it just can't communicate the energy, the positivity, the drive, uh, the presentation that certain candidates bring to the table. And what happens is recruiters see resumes that look good and the expectation level goes up, that they're going to see someone amazing, but when they actually meet the person, it's not quite the right match. But the opposite is true, too, and this is the one really that I was always more concerned about as a recruiter, which is, there's a lot of dynamic, talented people out there who bring a lot to the table, but their resume may not jump at an employer. Maybe they're a younger candidate with less experience. Maybe they're not the most adept person at, uh, at creating a resume, but boy, do they bring a lot to the table. And employers are missing out on those candidates, and those candidates are hiding in anonymity. Certainly not something they want, but it's the position they find themselves in. So Knox is driving this engagement between these two groups through the video medium, so that candidates get a minute or two of the employer's ear to make their case on how they can help, and employers get a true sense of the depth of what these candidates bring to the table. That makes so much sense to me, of course. So what have been some of Knox's biggest achievements so far? Suzanne, it's been an incredible ride. I mean, we launched in 2015, so we're still in the early stages. of We're two years in. Knox initially launched in the career fair space, so we inserted our technology into that environment, which had been a paper-driven system for so long. Imagine the frustrations, and for my HR colleagues out there listening today, they immediately connect with us. We go to these events, we meet lots of people, but we end up with a stack of resumes uh, about this high that we've got to take back, log, file, account for, and find some way to begin our follow-up. It, it wasn't working. And candidates make 50 paper copies of their resume, and they hand them out at every booth, and it's a bit of an inconvenience for them, too, and, and they have a hard time leaving a lasting impression. So the Knox technology basically uh, took the process and, and Made it basically made it to where technology was improving the efficiency and effectiveness of those engagements, which was so important. So from there, we started realizing that Knox could be something pretty special. And so from there, we decided we've got to find ways to scale uh, this platform outside of our city. And so we first spoke at One Million Cups, which is another amazing uh, addition our community's made within the last year. 
to bring entrepreneurs in to speak about what they're doing. And we got our first investor in June of last year that followed one million in cops. And then a few short weeks after that, we were invited to participate in Wichita's first ever E2E accelerator, an entrepreneurial accelerator that drives innovative concepts and the entrepreneurs behind them to success. And so that was a, a, an invaluable experience for us. And now the latest is we're getting ready to launch a new technology that we're very excited about, which is basically going to be able to take these candidate videos and apply an algorithm that will extract intangible attribute data from the candidate videos, things like positivity and confidence and energy, so that employers now can go directly to the candidates who have the traits that are relevant for the position. And candidates, they can access their own analytics and find ways that they can become better performers within the video medium. So everybody wins through this new technology. That is mind-blowing. <laughs> well, that brings us to the higher local challenge. So what are the driving forces behind that initiative, and why is it so important to our city? Well, first and foremost, let's recognize that Wichita has an amazing talent pool. The unfortunate side of that, though, is many of them are still invisible and not known to our employers. And what happens a lot of times, Susanna, is that a candidate tries hard through the traditional approach of sending 50 resumes outright to employers and crossing their fingers and hoping that someone responds and, and is willing to engage them. And when they don't get that, Susanna, they feel the need to look at other markets, competing markets like Kansas City or Oklahoma City or Dallas. Wichita should not be losing our talent pool to those markets in our backyard. There was a report done recently uh, called the Chung Report. And essentially what uh, the Chung Report did is study Wichita economics, both now and in the future, and compare Wichita to cities of similar size to say, how are we positioned? Are we in an advantageous position or are we in a, in a disadvantaged position? And the study really showed that, <clears throat> which was amazing to me, Wichita's second greatest export, other than our aerospace parts, is our talent, mm. is our talent. And what they recognized in the Chung Report is that if we don't find some way to retain a, a higher percentage of our local talent, combined with our baby boomers exiting the market uh, every year, Wichita is going to have a labor crisis. So what the higher local challenge is doing is saying, let's take our technology that we've built. Let's put a community purpose behind it that makes a positive impact on our city. And that's what we're hoping to achieve with the higher local challenge. Why do you think both employers and candidates should participate? And if this is something that's sustained, what could be the long-term impact on our city? So Knox is not just doing this alone. We're bringing in a lot of community partners, academic partners, media partners, and community organizations. And the idea is that if employers and candidates see that this is a community-wide effort to bring everyone together in one central location, which will be the Knox platform, it's worth their time to get involved. So I say to employers, if you're looking to see what the Wichita Talent Pool has to offer, you want to be involved in the Higher Local Challenge. And if you're a candidate and you struggled for so long with visibility and you've just wanted a minute of the employer's ear, you're going to get it through the Higher Local Challenge. You're going to get it through the Knox platform. What it can mean for our city, of course, the more talent we retain, think about the investment and the value of the dollars, that if we can retain talent post-education in our city, Think about the day-to-day -day spending and how that impacts our economy. Sure. We can keep those dollars here, and we can keep all the intellectual property, so to speak, of the talent that we've developed in our community right back here contributing to our city. It's vitally important. What are some of the needs that still exist in regard to the higher local challenge if people want to get involved? Well, obviously, candidates and employers, we encourage everyone out there to, if nothing else, at least reach out to Knox, to the Higher Local Challenge team, and talk to us a little bit about what this initiative is and how they can get involved. So we want as many candidates and employers to join as we can. Specifically with candidates, I would say for everyone watching today, we all know someone in our circle who is looking for work, sure. either because they don't have an opportunity now or because they want to better themselves. We all know people like that. So I would really encourage our viewers to work that network. And if you have someone in that position, make sure they know this is going on and get involved. As from a community partner standpoint, the more organizations that we can get who are willing to take what the Higher Local Challenge is doing and distribute that within their communication channels, their social media, that really is gonna be the key to determining how many candidates we get involved in this process or lack thereof, because Knox can't do it alone. We need the community to rally behind us and hopefully we'll get that. That's all good advice and, and fairly easy to do. So Knox, of course, will be driving this through the video medium. What are some of the apprehensions or maybe misperceptions in regard to how video is used? And, and can you address those? 
Suzanne, it's, it's, it's really funny to think about because, you know, for many people, when we're having a casual conversation, we're completely relaxed and we're at ease. <laughs> sure. And then when they see a red light behind them, <laughs> that it represents this, this conversation is being videotaped, we tense up, we yeah. change. And so I think one of, the, one of the challenges that we have at Knox is to help people uh, become comfortable with the idea of doing a video. And some of the ways that we do it, there's really two primary ways. One is to think about if, if an employer asks you a question, which at the interview, by the way, candidates, they're going to do this. Tell me about yourself. And you did that to me today, yes. right? <laughs> so employers are going to want to know about the candidate's story. And so when you think about that interview process, when they go to an interview, Susanna, they've got one take to get every answer right to where it maintains the enthusiasm of the employer. One take. Now, to me, that's pressure. Mm. When you think about the video process, you have as many takes as you want. If you mess it up the first time, do it again. If takes 1 through 14 are not what the candidate likes, but take 15 is the one they nailed, the employer's going to see take 15. Will Byrne takes 1 through 14, but the employer gets to see take 15. So they're seeing what the, what the candidate has to put out there in its best form. Uh, so that's one of the misperceptions we have about video. Uh, I think the other thing, too, is most people think that the younger demographic is the one that embraces it. But we've actually seen, too, that candidates over 40 are embracing video because they appreciate how difference-making it can be to catching the attention of an employer mm -hmm. because they've been trapped in a resume environment for so long. On the employer side, one of the things I would say is the perception exists that there might be some potential for discrimination or that type of thing, which as a human resource executive, uh, we thought long and hard about. But it's actually the opposite, Susanna. Knox's site, because through the video, everything about the candidate, of course, is there for the employer to see. It's also a great opportunity for employers who want to proactively diversify and bring candidates in from all different backgrounds and all different perspectives into the interview process. They can effectively do that in Knox, where they can't when they're stuck in a resume-driven environment. When I think about the causes of a lot of protected class candidates, what I think of, Susanna, is if we're going to move their cause forward, we've got to give them meaningful visibility. I think what we tend to do in our society with good intentions is we think in order to safeguard them, let's put them in this safe little box here where they can't be potentially discriminated against and not let them out of there. Whereas all of the non-minority candidates, they can freely engage the market with every resource that's available with no limitations. And that, com that basically creates a competitive disadvantage. We've got to let our minority candidates out of that safe box and say, go out in the world, showcase who you are, convince an employer that you can be impactful. And 99% of employers, I would say 99.9, .9, but that's too common of a thing to say, 99% of employers want to hire people who bring the most value to the table. They don't care about that other stuff. And so I think Knox has an opportunity to really drive the cause forward, too, for these minority groups. So it's really just the opposite, I think, of what many people would, would assume. I see what you're saying, and, and that is reassuring. Now, you have been a recruiter for many, many years, so would you like to give your two cents about what makes a good candidate? What is a hireable candidate? Well, recruiting for 20 years, Susanna, is why there's these little spots of gray here in, in that resume environment right. we were talking about earlier. So what makes a good candidate? <clears throat> I think employers are starting to figure out that what makes a good candidate is all about their intangibles. Experience and know-how is important. Clearly, at a certain point to be successful in our jobs, we must know the aspects of the job and, and how to do it properly. But deeper than that, the candidate attributes are what are setting candidates apart. My message to candidates today is, if there are certain intangible traits that you bring to the table, highlight those. And that's what the Knox video environment gives you a chance to do. When I was a young recruiter, I used to really focus on experience a lot and think that, well, I was naturally representing Donlinger Construction at the time, I better get someone who knows something about construction. And although on the surface that makes sense, I would hire many people who had wonderful construction knowledge and experience, Susanna, but they couldn't show up to work on time, mm -hmm. or they weren't self-starting, or they couldn't get along with their peers, or they didn't take any pride in the quality of their work. Right. They had the experience and know-how, mind you, but they didn't know how to use any intangible attributes to benefit our company. And I started realizing that candidates who have the right intangibles they're self-starting, uh, they're loyal, they're team-oriented. Um, they look at something bigger than themselves. When employers see that, we want to get them involved in the organization. So my message to candidates is highlight your intangibles because that what separates you from the rest of the field when you can emphasize those. I really appreciate you sharing all that, Mike. And I want to conclude with 
maybe sort of a pointed question. What is your current assessment of the city? And what do you think is Wichita's outlook for the future? I'm going to answer it this way, Susanna. Everybody who knows me knows I'm a positive guy. I'm going to use the term that we maybe aren't always excited to hear, cautiously optimistic. I think Wichita is beginning to make a pivot. I think we're beginning to understand that as a city, we've got to do things differently. We've got to look to the future. Uh, while the Chung Report was very valuable and certainly brought light again to the problem of talent retention, this isn't the first time this has happened, Susanna. We've had other initiatives in our community which pointed out the exact same problem. And I think what's incumbent upon us as a Wichita community to do, and this is so key, um, I'm going to borrow something from my E2E friends, uh, which I learned over the last several months of working with our, our folks over at E2E. For a year, when E2E decided to, uh, to launch this program, they were doing what they called strategic thinking, meaning how are we going to shape this where it's impactful in the community? But then they transitioned to what they called strategic doing. What it essentially means for those of us out there watching is Wichita's got to stop analyzing and now we got to start acting. And that's what this higher local challenge is meant to do is to say, all right, Wichita, we are willing to put our technology into this effort to retain talent so that we can be impactful in our city and start to take the Chung Report, which was released in, it was done in 2015, released in early 2016, I believe. That's a year ago. We've got to start doing some things. Otherwise, what Wichita cannot afford to do is to have another report in five years that says, Wichita, you better find ways to retain your talent or else we're in trouble. We've got to do something now, and we've still got a window to achieve it. We've had a lot of support for this idea and for the concept of what we're doing, Susanna, within the community, which gives me the optimism. The cautious part is there has been some organizations in the city that uh, pay it good words but don't actually get involved and act. So sometimes I think we get so caught up in our own environments and our own needs that we can't look beyond ourselves. And I encourage every individual and every organization, look beyond yourself. Think about our city. Think about our future. Collectively, if we do that, we're going to be just fine. Okay. Time to heed the call. Well, that brings our first Knox Talk segment to a close. Thank you, Mike. And we're all excited to see what impact Knox and the Higher Local Challenge will have here in Wichita. If you are an employer wanting to discover Wichita talent during the Higher Local Challenge, I encourage you to go to www.higherlocalchallenge.com and activate a Knox employer profile. Use the promo code HIGHERLOCAL17 and you'll get a special rate that will allow you to use the Knox platform during the Higher Local Challenge to post jobs and review candidate profiles. If you'd like more information or a demonstration of the Knox platform, we invite you to contact us at 316-425-7200 or email us at info at knox.net. If you're a candidate wanting to be visible during the HLC, go to our event website and create a candidate profile. You'll have the opportunity to upload a brief video introduction where you can speak directly to employers and tell them how you can help their companies. And it's absolutely free. Thank you for watching. We'll be introducing another community partner next week, so keep watching for posts on the Knox Facebook page and Twitter feed. If you have questions about the Higher Local Challenge, feel free to message us on social media, or if you just want to stay up to date on our progress, go to facebook.com slash Knox and click on the sign up button. As we close, we want to introduce one of our key Higher Local Challenge partners and extend a big thanks to them. And that partner is World Studios and Lightspeed VT, who are our video production partner. They have made the production of these interviews possible. We value them greatly, and if you are needing video-related production or virtual training services, we would encourage you to reach out and consider using them. We'll see you next time on Knox Talks. <laughs>